Welcome to the video guys. We all know about Tony Blair far too well and the damage his premiership is still doing to this country even now. You can literally take your pick on which destructive thing to call out this septic spot on the brown eye of humanity. He has actually done that much. Well of course it was not just us he led down the toilet. We all know about his warmongering in the Middle East affecting them countries and us of course. But he also did something in the early 2000s to one of our neighbours that they are now deeply regretting. We are talking talking about the Republic of Ireland that Tony Blair convinced to join the Euro despite warnings at the time that it would be a disaster. Which of course we are now seeing with their bailouts and latest budgets that Ireland is on the hook for a large portion of as I covered a few weeks back now. A lot of people in Ireland are not happy they are paying more into the EU than they get back from it for the first time ever. But it seems more Irish diplomats are coming out screaming about how they need to get out of the disaster that is the EU and the single currency which is reported here in the Express that headlines. Tony Blair convinced Ireland to join the Euro. Now Dublin must get out or sail into disaster. Ireland was convinced to join the Euro by former UK Prime Minister Tony Blair but now it needs to show courage to free itself from the straitjacket of the single European currency an Irish diplomat has claimed. Ray Bassett, the former Irish ambassador to Canada, Jamaica and the Bahamas believes Ireland needs to give serious consideration following the UK footsteps with IR exit. He says a courageous decision will be required to deliver financial independence in parallel. Mr Bassett outlines these ideas about IR exit and the Eurozone in his new book Ireland and the UK Post Brexit. Explaining Ireland's decision to sign up for the Euro in 2002, he said the differences of opinion in London between then Prime Minister Tony Blair and his Chancellor Gordon Brown were put down to petty political turf wars. In Ireland, we had great admiration for Blair who helped deliver the Good Friday Agreement and in a manner which no other British Prime Minister would have been capable of doing. Blair was very pro euro and this only reinforced the Irish government's view that the euro was a desirable place to be and look where that has got them now. But them admiring Tony Blair back then for the Good Friday Agreement really doesn't surprise me because as we all know Tony Blair is one of the best snake oil salesmen there is out there in the world today. The arguments that Brown articulated who himself is a complete and utter tosser which now look very sound were given no real hearing. Ireland forfeited with the assurances from Tony Blair that it was on the right course with its enthusiastic commitment to the European project sailed on and into disaster. Which obviously I pointed out a few weeks ago in my video as I said. Mr Bassett who emphasised the approach continued under former TOC Leo Varadkar said there had been little doubt in political circles about the wisdom of joining the monetary union and very little actual analysis. That's because when it comes to the EU the people pushing to get you in there don't care about actual facts or figures, they just care about what they want and how much money they're likely to be paid for getting you in there. Especially Tony Blair, we know what he's been up to since he left number 10, that is for sure. He added, while working inside the Irish civil service, I remember in the build up to our joining there was a steely determination in political circles to show the world that, in contrast to the British, we were good Europeans. Which obviously you showed yourself to be a good little bunch of bitches who the European Union can just walk all over and now you're going to be paying them the money that you would have been paying them before if of course we would have got out sooner. Proving what we have said that now we have gone the rest of the countries within the European Union need to follow us and out the door quickly. There was even a feeling of smugness at the time that the UK for internal political reasons was not joining but no doubt would be forced to sign up later. Yeah well look where that got you, wasn't going to happen and never will. The complacent attitude was to wreak havoc on our economy during the crash. It would not be the last time we totally misjudge political developments in Britain which is not only you that have done that, of course many of the politicians over here did the same. When they all ran around so sure that Remain would win and Brexit it would be an utter disaster that obviously it's turned out not to be. The only disaster there has been is the way politicians, the media and the rest of these snivelling shit weasels have been acting over the last four years since they lost and then lost again and lost again. In reference to the scepticism of other countries when it came to the Euro, Mr Bassett pointed out to the Dutch Parliament's unanimous vote in 2017 to hold an inquiry into the country's future relationship with the Euro. He added, this did not mean that the Netherlands was going to ditch the Euro in the short term but it does reflect the dissatisfaction with the common currency in that country. Significantly, the Dutch as a prominent member of the so-called Frugal Four, which also includes Austria, Sweden and Denmark, were deeply uncomfortable with a 
677 million pound coronavirus rescue plan approved by the European Council last month as I covered with reference to Italy where Gianluigi Paragon last month launched his No Europe for Italy party modelled on Nigel Farage's Brexit party. Mr Bassett said the Italian general election of 2018 represented an electoral earthquake as the Italian political landscape was reshaped radically. Any decision by Italy to drop the euro, something which is probably necessary to revive its economic growth, would seriously endanger the future of the eurozone. Good. Italy, hurry up and do it. Also, the Netherlands swiftly join them because that will really put the EU straight up the shitter. In terms of Ireland itself's future, Mr Bassett conceded it would be the height of irresponsible responsibility for any Irish administration not to have well-developed plans to depart the euro, given its underlying weakness. There will of course be possible emergency measures on file ready in case of implosion, but the government needs, in addition, to look strategically at how it could escape this straitjacket, especially now that the UK has departed the European Union. He concludes, in the final analysis, it was a profoundly political act to take Ireland into the Euro, and it will take a profoundly political decision with courage to take us out, which obviously they can thank Tony Blair for, as we pointed out earlier in this video. But I have got to say, more and more, we are getting stories like this of various different countries and their politicians coming out against the European Union. Union. Shame, they are like four or five years too late. We have all known this for an extreme amount of time now. Now, of course, we would absolutely love Ireland, Italy and the rest of them to all leave this second, but of course that's not going to happen. But with the way things are going now, especially for the EU itself, this could be happening over the next five to ten years, I am willing to bet. And I've got to say, I actually can't wait for it to do that. Of course, it could happen a little bit sooner, it could take a little bit longer, but we will just have to wait and see and give our friends in these other countries the help in hand if ever they need it. Because I don't know about you guys, but I would prefer every European country to be independent and make their own decisions. The people of each respective country deserve that at least. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors. Slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. <laughs>